Hi everyone, today we're at the British Country Music Festival in Blackpool and I'm talking to Molly Ann. Hello! Hello, Hi. and Dad. Hello. <laughs> so, Molly Ann, um, how long have you been writing and performing country music? So, country music is a newer thing for me. I've been writing and performing since I was around about 12, um, performing since I was 12, maybe writing since I was around 14. Um, and I went through a, a quite a progression of playing, you know, punk rock heavy metal, rock music, that comes from Dad. <laughs> well, Dad, Dad takes the, the sort of classic rock, Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, the classics. Man after my own heart. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so country music emerged for me, I think, around my early 20s. I did some travelling in, in America, California, um, and I've always been an acoustic guitarist, and so it just kind of found me, the sound found me, um, and I kind of fall in between country and folk. Yeah, somewhere in the middle. <laughs> Um, so if you could invite people who have influenced you in your musical career to a dinner party, who would you invite? That's a great question. I love that question. Bob Dylan. Definitely Bob Dylan. But when he was younger. When he was younger. Maybe not Bob Dylan now. <laughs> I hope you didn't hear that. <laughs> I love you, Bob. Dolly Parton. Uh, Laura Marling. I think she's wonderful. Joni Mitchell. Um, and really weirdly, I think I'd invite Kurt Cobain, just because he's so interesting. Um, and his music really influenced me when I was a teenager. Uh, I just think he'd be, you know, he'd bring the drama. Well, everyone loves drama at a dinner party, don't they? So, yeah, Kurt's invited. <laughs> so, if you could choose a well-known song and put a country twist on it, what song would you choose? Funny, we were just talking about this, yes. weren't we? <laughs> so, um, I'm going to go on um, Bob... Bob Harris's country show is under the Apple Tree session soon, and um, he has asked me to play um, the first song I ever, ever learnt. And we were saying, well, that's probably Deep Purple, Smoke on the Water. <laughs> so we probably, we're not going to play that. <laughs> but if I could, I would, yeah. Um, well, if you had a chance of performing anywhere in the world, what would your dream stage be? Oh, that's a really good question as well. I'm really hoping that I get um, to perform at some point in my life at the Cambridge Folk Festival. The main stage has been kind of my dream for the last few years, um, listening to folk musicians like Simon and Garfunkel and Laura Marling. Um, they've all kind of headlined that stage and it's, yeah, an aspiration for me. That would be lovely, wouldn't it? Yeah. So, um, what's your favourite thing to do? when you're not performing? Oh, I teach yoga. So my full-time job, I'm a yoga teacher um, and I love it. So that would probably be, that would probably be it. I'm always down in my studio. So I should talk to you about my hip then, should I? <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about, yeah, we, we can do some, we can do some tricks. <laughs> Um, what excites you about the British country music scene? I love this sort of niche um, family that it's become. Everyone knows everyone. It's super friendly. People will come up to me at festivals that, I don't know, I played last year, and they'll say, I remember you from this festival. I just love that, that um, the artists all know each other and the, the fans all know the artists by, you know, first name and we're all friends. And it's, yeah, a lovely family. Okay. Um, tell us about the most unusual gig you've ever played, be it a venue or the situation you found yourself in. That's, a big, that's an interesting question. Can you remember any that comes spring to mind? Uh, yes. Um, Nippy, Nippy Festival. When, oh, when yeah. The, when, the, when the PA system failed for the main stage and, um, and, you, and you chose to take over the, the, kids, the, the vacated kids' circus tent that, that, where all the huh? kids' entertainment had been during the day. <laughs> and, um, and when the kids' entertainer came out and set his PA up again, PA up for us, and we did a gig in there. <laughs> that, was, that was an interesting one, because we were playing a gig to most of the music festival, but with a, a PA system that was for a, a magician. So it was, yeah, hardcore. That was probably the most rock and roll show we played. Music festival where, where 5,000 people were present, yeah. and there wasn't any music on the main stage. And your sister had it announced, there's, there's live music in the kids' tent. So you can imagine what happened next. <laughs> strongly about being a British country music artist because my music has got, um, it's very interwoven with British folk and I think country music traditionally is American folk music and so there's this beautiful sort of 
interweaving of British folk and then the British take on country music. So you get this really outstanding like storytelling that comes with you know traditional country and folk. Um, and yeah, I think we've got really strong sound going on, which is really exciting.